the Sony Pictures cyber attack. It is an attack the U.S. now believes was instigated by North Korea. In an interview on CNN's State of the Union this morning, President Obama told Candy Crowley that it was an act of cyber vandalism, a very costly one at that. And he said the U.S. will respond proportionally. Now, as we come to air this morning, there is a new statement from the North Korean regime. That is a regime that keeps denying it's behind the hacking at Sony, but a regime that also keeps threatening the United States and condemning the movie The Interview. Yes, The Interview. Can you believe we are talking about cyber attacks and threats because of a Seth Rogen movie? This really is an extraordinary moment. What was thought of as a silly, maybe lousy comedy just a few weeks ago has now become a symbol of two of America's greatest values, freedom of expression and freedom from fear. I want to say that one again, freedom from fear. This affects every movie studio, every media company, really every news organization in the digital age. In fact, President Obama said that this morning. We're going to play that soundbite uh, just ahead. So I have a group of guests standing by this morning covering this from every angle. We've got Mark Cuban, Larry King, Alan Dershowitz, and many more. But we need to begin with this new threat from North Korea because it was published in English earlier this morning. And I'm going to read a bit of it to you now. It says the DPRK has clear evidence that the U.S. administration was deeply involved in the making of such dishonest reactionary movie. They're talking about the interview. It goes on to say later, the Army and people of the DPRK are fully ready to stand in confrontation with the U.S. in all war spaces, including cyber warfare space, to blow up those citadels. This is a, a long statement that was published. So let's go straight to Kyung La, CNN's correspondent in Seoul, South Korea. Uh, you're up late with us, and thank you for being here. When you read this statement, what were the big takeaways to you? Uh Oh, I thought that the usual writer for the DPRK has finally come back from vacation because we're seeing that bellicose, saber-rattling, the typical rhetoric from North Korea, they are upping the ante. It is just like the rhetoric we hear whenever North Korea attacks, whenever they lash out, and they are at their very best here. A couple things to note. It did come out in English, Brian. You're, you're right about that. Uh, it came out a couple of hours ago, late here in Korea. The audience is absolutely not the domestic audience. It is for America. It came from the National Defense Commission. This is essentially the agency that, as far as we know, runs the military, the Pentagon, if you will, speaking directly for Kim Jong-un. And the other thing that I really note about this is that they are trying to up the ante. North Korea craves attention, and they are saying, mm. okay, everyone's concerned about cyber attacks, Well, we're going to make it worse. So when you read this, you know, we, we were on air together yesterday and, and you called one of the threats from North Korea ridiculous. You know, they, they were uh, coming out yesterday uh, talking about this film. What's different between what we heard yesterday and what we're now hearing this morning? It's even more ridiculous. I mean, they, they say that they're going to uh, wage war against the White House, the Pentagon, the U.S. mainland. I mean, it is typical North Korea language, but at the same time, we have to remember this is a brutal regime. What they say you have to take with some sort of seriousness. And the fact that they have been so successful with Sony Pictures, you know, so how much of this rhetoric can they actually achieve? So th there is this crazy over-the-top language that they throw out there, yeah. but there yeah. is some seriousness we have to, 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 to take away from that. To your point, uh, reading this long statement, at one point it says the interview is a movie that's undesirable and that it justifies and incites terrorism. It should not be allowed in any country, in any region. As I read this new statement, Kyung, I thought to myself, it sounds a lot like what this anonymous group of hackers said on Thursday. You know, on Thursday night, they sent a threatening email to the heads of the Sony studio basically saying, you did the right thing by cutting the movie, the movie, the interview out of theaters. You did the right thing. And as long as you never release the movie, we will stop attacking you. This sounds somewhat similar, does it not? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, the same same ghostwriter. Uh, it, it's like someone who continues to smoke. It smells like cigarette smoke, but pledges that they take the habit. I, I mean, North Korea simply uh, is trying to say that they don't know who they are, but, oh, we really love what they've done. So, it, you know, yes, it, you're it occurs absolutely to me right that, about that. It occurs to me this is the kind of statement, this is the kind of rhetoric that causes people like Seth Rogen to want to make a movie making fun of Kim Jong-un. But let me ask you one more thing, because I think it's important here that North Korea is claiming the administration 
Russian was somehow involved in the making of this movie. I wanted to play a soundbite from Fareed Zakaria's interview with Michael Linton, the, the head of Sony Pictures, where, we t where they talked about how all of this started, because it was back in June uh, when North Korea actually first condemned the movie. That was six months before it was supposed to be released. Here is what Michael Linton said. Michael, let me ask you to go through the sequence of happened. When, when did you first realize that you had a problem? The first time we understood that there was an issue with the North Koreans was back in June of last summer when they came forward with various um, uh, emails and statements and actually I think they were in touch with the White House itself and, 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 and described um, um, their disfavor with the movie. At that point in time, we actually reached out to experts um, at various at, at think tanks within the State Department to try and get a proper understanding of whether or not there was a problem here and whether or not we were providing a security risk. Um, and we were told that it, there wasn't a problem here. And so we continued to proceed. Including the U.S. government told you there wasn't The a U.S. government told us there wasn't a problem. That's correct. What is the significance, Kiyong, of, of North Korea claiming that the government, the U.S. government, is behind this movie? Well, they really like the idea of everything playing into the U.S. government, that everything that every American does, every negative piece of whatever, just points directly back to the United States, because that's how North Korea works. Of course they think it goes back to the, the, the head of the state. So that, that doesn't surprise me at all. That, that, to me, is part of the ridiculousness of North Korean thinking. What we have to take away from this is not that. I, I think the important thing for people to take away is that bottom part of the threat where they do say that they are going to escalate the cyber war, escalate the attacks. That's what I think the White House is going to walk away and mm. wonder how serious is North, K North Korea about that? What is the next attack going to be? Doesn't seem to me uh, President Obama is going to get much of a vacation in Hawaii uh, given this, this escalation we're hearing from North Korea. Kyung, thank you for being here for us. You bet. What we are hearing there from South Korea is the geopolitical story, which is unfolding as we speak. But there's another side of the story that's also unfolding this morning, and that's the commercial side. It has been Sony Pictures' worst week ever. Already crippled by that cyber attack that happened at the end of November, the movie studio had to cancel the Christmas release of the interview on Wednesday. That was because theater owners all said they wouldn't show the movie. We're talking about AMC and Regal and Cinemark and others. So why did the theater owners say that? Well, because of anonymous hackers' threats. That threat from Tuesday you heard about, it even invoked 9-11 and warned Americans to stay away from theaters. Here on CNN, I call this capitulation, and so did a lot of others. And even the president said Sony had made a mistake. But now, and this is the important part, now Sony is trying to find a new way to distribute the movie. David Boies, an attorney retained by Sony, said this on Meet the Press just a few minutes ago. And remember, Sony only delayed this. Um, Sony has been fighting to get this picture distributed. It will be distributed. Um, how it's going to be distributed, I don't think anybody knows quite yet, but it's going to be distributed. I'll tell you a little background about how this story is happening. Some email servers at Sony are still having trouble. The best way to communicate to sources there is via their personal cell phones, not their work phones. And one source just told me, quote, we are still pursuing all options. So what could that be? Could that be Netflix? Could that be YouTube? Could that be independent theater owners, maybe? I think we will find out in the days to come. I have a guest standing by in Hollywood. Let's bring him in. He's very concerned that this movie might never be seen. He's Gary Michael Walters, the CEO of Bold Films. It's a company behind movies like Drive, Whiplash, and the brand new one, Nightcrawler, that is in theaters now. Gary, thanks for being here. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Gary, tell me what the, uh, what the problem would be with this movie never getting into the public domain? I think that would be terrible. <clears throat> At both films, we're dedicated to artistic freedom, but we simply make the films. At the end of the day, we rely on our studio partners, like Sony, which is releasing Whiplash in theaters now, to release the films in theaters, on television, on DVD, on SVOD. And so if this movie never comes out, it's going to have a chilling effect on freedom of expression much more broadly, you know, not just about this silly comedy. I think that it will have a terrible effect because when investors like us 
try to figure out how to make the movie and how to get our money back and how to make a profit, the domestic distribution is uh, become a very crucial area that's difficult to secure. Any right. impediment to that is going to make a hard job much harder. And so I think that what is crucial is not that we talk just about the interview, but that Sony not stand alone. The industry, law enforcement, the government needs to come together and formulate a common policy because when America unites in a crisis, we're unstoppable.